Hi guys, welcome back. H2O uh, Lesson 5E. So this is our final day of specifically, at least, talking about discouragement. So we're going to open with prayer as we always do and begin our lesson. Oh, Jesus, thank you, Lord God, dear Heavenly Father, for who you are, your greatness, the fact that you are able to do things far beyond what we can even imagine, how you never fail us, how you're perfect in all you do, Lord. You are so holy, and we worship you today. We worship you, Lord God. We give you glory. We give you honor, Lord. There's no one like you, not even close. Continue, Lord God, working with us. Don't give up on us, Lord God. Oh, Jesus, I can be so messy. I can fail you so much that you choose to come and live inside of me. It just simply amazes me, Lord. I ask you to touch the lives of each and every person who's watching this video, Lord God, who's working through this Bible study. I pray that you would bless them tremendously, Lord God. Bless them, Lord God. Encourage them. As they learn the truth, Lord God, you promised the truth would set us free. So, Lord God, teach us the truth that we might be free to live the joyful, abundant life that you have and you so desire for us. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. All right, then, so yesterday's cliffhanger was out of Daniel's chapter 3 and chapter 6 talking about, as we know, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. And then the second part is about Daniel. So the questions I left you with, Christ didn't promise his followers an easy life. What did he promise? Well, the answer to that really came out of the Hebrews reading, Hebrews 13, verses 5 and 6. Basically, he says there that he is our helper and that he would never leave us. Let's just go ahead and read that. I'm looking it up with you. Hebrews, I know you read it yesterday. Hebrews, where is it? 13, verses 5 and 6. Let your conduct be without covetousness. Be content with such things as you have. For he himself has said, I will never leave you nor forsake you. So we may boldly say, the Lord is my helper. I will not fear. What can man do to me? So be encouraged by those words. So the easy life isn't what is promised, but he is our helper and he'll never leave nor forsake us. So let's go on to the second question. Do you think he kept his promises to Daniel, first of all? Um, and then did he also keep his promises to Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego? What do you think about that? Because, you know, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego ended up in a heap of trouble, ended up being thrown into a fiery furnace, and Daniel ended up being in a heap of trouble, and he ended up in a lion's den with hungry lions. So it's easy to maybe look at that quickly and be like, yeah, God's promises aren't true. Look, he wasn't there with them. They were faithful to God. And that's how God rewards them. They get thrown into bad situations. Well, it's interesting because God uses those situations to bring the light of truth to an entire nation, to a king who ends up being able to influence the entire nation as well. So I'm going to say yes, that God did keep his promise because it's interesting too that just like we just read, God will never leave you nor forsake you. He is your helper. That yes, they went into the fiery furnace and he went into the lion's den, but God was with them. Was he not? They didn't end up burning up. They didn't even smell like smoke. They had to go through that bad situation. And I'm thinking they're human like I am, that as the door of that furnace is opening, they're thinking, okay, all right, boys, this is it come to the end of the line. We're about to meet our maker. But you know what? That's all right too, because I'm ready to meet my maker. So whatever it is, it is. But I don't know that they were truly thinking we're about to escape out of this unscathed. Surely they're human, right? What would you do in that situation? Wouldn't you be thinking, 
that this is the end. This is it. It's going to be bad. But their faith, they, they were thrown in and came out unscathed. And I want to read what, um, that's what I had pulled up to begin with on here. I want to read what Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego said because I absolutely love what they said. Oops, chapter 3. All right, so Nebuchadnezzar in his old big kingness says in verse, where am I at? Verse 15. But if you do not worship, you shall be cast immediately into the midst of a burning, fiery furnace. And who is the God who will deliver you from my hands? Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego answered and said to the king, O Nebuchadnezzar, we have no need to answer you in this matter. In other words, words don't mean anything right here. Proof's in the pudding, right? So we don't need to answer you in this matter. If that is the case, our God, whom we serve, is able to deliver us from the burning, fiery furnace, and he will deliver us from your hand, O king. But if not, love this, listen to this, but if not, let it be known to you, O king, that we do not serve your gods, nor will we worship the gold image which you have set up. In other words, we follow God to the very end, regardless of what we go through. I believe God stands with me, God is with me, and in the end, I shall see his glory. Do with me as you want. God might deliver me, God might not, but I trust my God. And I just, oh, so amazing, isn't it? So amazing. And of course we know, because we did our reading, the end of the story. And then also you can think about Daniel as well in the middle of the lion's den. He's thrown in with hungry, hungry lions. And yet he understands that God and his angel shut the mouth of the lion. And uh, some might say, well, then the lions just weren't hungry. Well, the story kind of proves that to be untrue because uh, in the morning when he survives, the king who was put in that bad situation is thrilled that Daniel is still alive. And he throws the others, the accusers, he throws those in with, his, with their families. Oh, that's just so bad. Throws them all in, and they are eight immediately. So the lions were hungry. That's not the issue. Um, in the end, too, both kings are corrected before God. Both kings acknowledge the truth that God is the one to worship in him alone. They, as kings, are not God's. So um, then the third question, how do these men exemplify the armor of God that we read about in Galatians 6, verses 10 through 18? Now this comes out of lesson number one, um, the first week of our lessons, specifically lesson 1C is where we discussed um, the, the, yeah, is where we discussed the answers to Ephesians 6, 8 through, uh, 10 through 18. So if you need to go back to that lesson, do that, or you can just pull up Galatians 6, 10 through 18 and, and look through it. But I do recommend the lesson if you haven't already done it. For those who have done it, you recognize they exemplify pretty much every single part of the armor of God. First, the truth girdle. They've been living by the truth. So the girdle's not pinching on them. The girdle's helping them. They are right in line with God because they're living the truth. They have the breastplate of righteousness. That means not necessarily they're perfect because they're human beings, but they have put on the armor of God. They've put on the righteousness of God. They're covered in God's righteousness. The gospel shoes, well, yeah, they're still prepared to preach the message that God is God and no one else is to be worshipped but God alone. So they're preaching the gospel while they're about to be thrown into a fiery furnace and into a hungry den of lions. They're obviously using their face shield. Might not understand it all, and I bet they don't. I'm thinking their knees are rattling just a little bit because they're human. But they understand, like we just read with Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. But if not, let it be known, we will not serve another god. And then the helmet of salvation is, is shown right there as well. They understand they're saved. They understand they're servants of God. And no matter what mankind does to them, God is the one who ultimately 
will win. So let's continue into reading for today. Um, you are to read 2 Corinthians chapter 4, verses, uh, verse 16, all the way through chapter 5, verse 7. So do the reading, and we'll see you back here on Monday. If this is a Friday for you, then enjoy your weekend, uh, and we will see you back on Monday. Otherwise, we'll just see you next time you click.